Okay, so we just went through with basic induction using inequalities. And this is a new method that I want to teach you. And it's called using the difference within this inequalities. And how we use this is let's consider if we want to prove that the left hand side A is greater than the right hand side B, right? Now, can you imagine that if we move B to the other side, A minus B is greater than zero, which means that if we use a difference between them, as long as we can find out that this number is positive, then we can say that yes, A must be greater than B, yeah? And it doesn't matter if it's B or A, as long as you follow this general sign and prove whether it's positive or sometimes you'll be proving it's negative, then you can show that this is greater than the other side. So this is a really good method to have on hand because sometimes with these inductions, you can get a little bit lost and not know exactly where to start. So if that does occur, you can always know that you can use using the difference for your inductions with inequalities. Okay, let's apply that to a real question now. So question two, we wanna prove by mathematical induction that n squared is less than two to the power of n and it's four, n is greater or equal to five. So starting off with step one, we wanna show that it's true for n equals to five. So remember, we just take the smallest value of this and left hand side, five squared is 25. Right hand side, two to the power of five is 32. So we can definitely conclude from that that yes, the left hand side is less than the right hand side. So therefore, this statement is true for n equals to five. All right, step two, our assumption. Assume it is true for n equals to k. So we just substitute in k. k squared is less than two to the power of k for k is greater than five. Now, step three is our proving where we show it is true for n equals to k plus one. So substituting in k plus one here, I have k plus one squared. And over here, I have two to the power of k plus one. Yeah, so this is what I wanna prove. This inequality is what I wanna prove that the left hand side is less than the right hand side. And now we're gonna use a method of use, using the difference. So we're gonna have the right hand side minus the left hand side, okay? So let's do that, subtract that. So to prove that yeah, if, if this side is greater than that, we wanna show it's positive, don't we? So we have two to the power of k plus one minus k plus one squared. And we can just change this into two times two to the power of k and this I've just expanded to k squared plus 2k plus one. Now, let's use our assumption in step two, which is that two to the power of k is greater than k squared, okay? So here, I have two to the power of k, yes? And over here, I've put in k squared. And because we've said that this side is greater than that other side, right? Therefore, this side must be greater than that. If I've put in, can you see how everything else is exactly the same, right? Two, two is the same. This and this is exactly the same. The only thing I've changed is this becomes the lesser value of K squared. So therefore, this must be less than that. Does that make sense? If I've only changed one thing, and that one thing is less than, then this side must be less than the other side. Okay, so using the assumption, we've done that. So now what we need to do is to simplify some of these things. So over here, we have two times K squared minus all of that, and I just wanna simplify just working with this bit over here now, okay? So we have 2k squared minus k squared minus 2k minus 1. And that's how we get k squared minus 2k minus 1. 
So just reminder, this is a continuation of just this bit over here. Now that will also become, I want to make a perfect square there. And how I do that is you go k squared minus 2k. And remember you take half of this, which is negative one, and then we want to multiply that by itself, which becomes plus one, yeah? Now we can't just go around changing the equation, so we want to subtract two, so that becomes the same as that equation. Now this, k squared minus 2k plus one, becomes a perfect square of k minus one squared, and that's where we get the negative two, okay? So now we've changed it to that, k minus one squared minus two. Let's look back to our equation that we're actually working with. We have k plus one squared is less than two to the power of k plus one. So now we've shown that this is this over here, but we're using the difference. Now remember what I said about the difference is if we're gonna go this side minus that side, and that's greater than, then what we wanna prove is that the right hand side minus the left hand side is greater than zero or positive. That's what we wanna do, isn't it? Now, this here is a perfect square. Now, let's consider that this is greater or equal to five. So, since it's k is greater or equal to five, substituting in five, what do we have here? We will have five minus one, which is four, four squared, 16, 16 minus two. So the smallest number it can be will be 14. So therefore, this will always be positive, won't it? So we can say that it will always be greater than zero. Now, if this is always greater than zero, we can say that the right-hand side minus the left-hand side is greater than zero, yeah? Because this is all equal to, this is greater than, this is greater than, we've proved that this is greater than zero. Now moving that to the other side, we've proven that right-hand side is greater than left-hand side. Just move that to that side. So therefore, the left-hand side is less than the right-hand side, which is what we wanted to show originally. So therefore, this is true for n equals to k plus one, yeah? And in our conclusion, we can just write, therefore, for n squared less than two to the power of n, it is true for all integers of n is greater than five. So remember, when we're using the difference method, what we want to think about is what we want to prove at the end, because it's easy to lose track of that. So here, because we're doing right-hand side minus left-hand side, I would actually just write that at the top of your page. It's greater than zero. So what I'm trying to prove is that it's positive, yeah? So when you get to here, you don't forget what you're trying to do. You can remember, okay, I'm trying to prove it's positive. So since this is the smallest number, it can be 16, then the smallest number, the whole thing can be is 14. So yes, it must be positive.